يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة وآتيناه الحكم صبيا إذ قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك ورافعك إلي محمد رسول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سورة التوبة is a surah that talks about repentance and repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be obedient to Allah, to subject oneself to the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that people on the face of earth, if they do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are setting themselves to all kinds of miseries. This life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it. He created us to worship Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He sent messengers. And the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with the most perfect and the most comprehensive message that is valid till the day of judgment for people to accept it and for people to follow it, for them to be successful in this life and in the hereafter, to follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed all the different types of bad characteristics and good characteristics in this life. For the reciter of the Qur'an to be upon what is righteous and to stay away from what is evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet والسلام, and the companions of the Allah anhum to do things for the sake of Allah and only for the sake of Allah and that their Iman increases and decreases faith increases and decreases increases with the good deeds and decreases with the bad deeds this is the proper way to believe in matters of faith and matters of al Iman previous time we talked about verses that talks about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers not to be away from the Prophet والسلام, blaming those who stayed behind when the Prophet ﷺ went to the battle of Tabuk and blaming them and, and, and making them regret that they stayed back when the Prophet ﷺ went forward and sacrificed him and, and, and his companions with their life and their wealth all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the believers after the matter has been established in Mecca and Medina and in the Arabic Peninsula for the Prophet ﷺ and everybody is under the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala living a life of goodness and having the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be established for them in the proper way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers then to go further beyond this and to go to those who are beyond their territories to spread the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spread the truth and for people to live their life under the justice of the deen of Islam and under the way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. So we inshallah ta'ala will go through verses 123 to 126 from Surah At-Tawbah and verses that sometimes people they have misunderstanding to it and they take it out of context. We need to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing uh, for a believer to be uh, shy away from explaining for making the matters very clear. This is the deen of al-haq. This is the religion of the truth and uh, the believers they need to submit themselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So starting with verse number 123, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qatilu ladhina yalunakum min al-kuffari wal yajidu fikum ghilda wa'lamu anna Allah ma'al muttaqeen. Which means, O you who have believed, fight those adjacent to you of the disbelievers and let them find in you harshness and know that Allah is with the righteous. So this call is for the believers, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman, O you who believe. And the verse was revealed after the battle of Tabuk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling the believers to continue their fight for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Allah, for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be superior, for the truth and the justice and the mercy and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be established. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers, and this is in the context of war. 
So this is in confrontation with their enemies. قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ يَلُونَكُمْ مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ So that means fight those who are adjacent to you from the disbelievers. And this is, the ayah is always mentioned in Jihad al-Talab, or not just to defend your land, but rather to go forward, to go to those who are adjacent to you. And then it goes one uh, step after the other. As the companions of Allah, عنهم, they fulfilled the orders of Allah, and they expanded the territories of uh, the believers, and uh, they went after uh, the Prophet ﷺ to the north and to the east and to the west, they spread the truth and they st uh, spread what is righteous. And in any nation, you know, when they are strong and they are powerful, they expand. But they expand, you know, usually the nations or the people of authority for their own personal benefit. As the Romans they did and as the Persians they did and as all civilizations till today they do, they expand. And they go after their own interest and the interest of their people. So they amass wealth, they amass power to control others and to manipulate others for their own benefit. And usually how nations are, and this is something that we can see clearly in history, they do these types of things so that they stay and they continue to be stronger and the weak becomes weaker. And they use all kinds and they do all kinds of injustices and evil. And that's what we see in even in the world that we live today. Those who have power and so on, how they spread injustices and, and evil and so on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the believers that this has nothing to do with the materialistic things of this life. And that's why the companions of Allah anhum, when they spread and they went to all kinds of places, they established what is right according to the deen of Islam. They were not after their own personal glory. They didn't change their way of life. They were not going after materialistic benefits and they become wealthy and powerful and so on. But rather it was for the benefit of the people to remove all the obstacles between the people and them getting to know the truth, for them to see the truth of Islam, for them to make their choice and their free choice whether to accept the truth or whether to stay on their falsehood. But there's no compulsion uh, against them, but rather for them to remove all of these barriers and also when the power and the means are there to establish ab among them, upon the people, the justice of the deen of Islam that there is no way of life, there is no rules, there is no laws whatsoever on the face of earth better than the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an and in the life of the Prophet ﷺ for the best of ways of lives on the face of earth, for the goodness to prevail, for the evil to be inferior. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers. وَلْيَجِدُوا فِيكُمْ غِلْضَةً And let them have, let you have harshness inside of you. This is in the context of fighting with them and of course you know anybody would you know sometimes people they take this out of context this is when people are fighting in a war two armies are fighting with each other what a person would expect the orders to be be soft this is in the context of fighting fighting between the people of the truth versus falsehood in any context of war and armies and things like this they're ordered to be tough and to be harsh and to be, you know, things, but not to be unjust and not to cause atrocities, not to kill the innocent ones, not to kill the women and the children and, and to burn and to uh, cause all kinds of evil actions. This is all not permissible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. But when they are in this context of war, in this state of fighting their enemies, they need to be upon this because this is what is needed. And therefore, when a person has the wisdom of how to use the proper attitude in whatever state that they're in, this is a great benefit for us to learn. So, if a, for example, if a parent has educated his children, you know, for them to know what is right and what is wrong, is a parent is always ordered to be lenient and nice and soft, or sometimes you have to use some form of firmness to make sure that the message goes across that this is the proper way and there's no compromisation in matters of goodness. But without crossing the boundaries of goodness, without committing injustices, without doing evil, without disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that has to be established. And that's why there's always extremes of things. There's always two extremes. One extreme is where a person doesn't care about anything and the other extreme is to be extreme. But the proper way is, is to follow the truth 
to follow the way of the Prophet والسلام, and who applied these verses. That's why these verses and these you know, uh, ayat of the Quran and the verses of the Quran are not to be taken out of context. What is the context of the verses? This is like the, the, the verses in their context in the Quran before and after. That's one thing or one meaning of context. But also the context of these verses of how it was applied at the time of the Prophet and That's why when we look into the history, when we look into the life of the Prophet وسلم, the companions of the Allah on whom, how they fought their wars, why did they do that, in what context, and what did they do as a result of this, this is what uh, people need to examine and to see how they applied the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the muttaqeen, He's with them to support them, to help them. Not the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them like He is with the disbelievers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with everyone, with His knowledge, with His power, with His hearing and seeing and so on. But here for the muttaqeen, it's a special one. It's a special one that means the support and the help and to make them victorious. So when people apply these types of rulings from Allah, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help the muttaqeen. But if they are not upon taqwa, if they don't fear Allah, if they don't uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they commit sins, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to be with them to give them victory and to aid them. If they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they follow the ways of their enemies, if they're more concerned about the, you know, seeking pleasure of their enemies, what goodness then would come to them as a result of that if they turn away from the orders of Allah. So again, this is a subject of truth versus falsehood. This is... Uh, following the way the Prophet والسلام, bringing all kinds of means of goodness and justice and not evil and atrocities and, and uh, spreading blood and so on. Then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, verse number 124 about the hypocrites uh, and the believers. وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِيمَانًا فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ and whenever a surah is revealed, there are among the hypocrites those who say, which of you has this increased faith? As for those who believed, it has increased them in faith while they are rejoicing. وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سورة. And this means that whenever a surah is revealed, that means every time a surah is revealed, that means it's a continuous action, something that is repeated, not just one time. Every time unzilat, brought down. Surah. Surah is, as we know, the Surah is a chapter of the Qur'an and uh, the, there are, you know, 114 Surahs in the Qur'an as we know. And these Surahs, they were known as Surahs at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ would say to the companions whenever verses are revealed to put these verses in this Surah and that Surah. So the Surahs were known at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Is not, is not, it was not something that happened after the Prophet ﷺ, but rather it was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ would lead them, for example, in the Salah, as Surah Al-Baqarah, then Surah Al-Nisa, then Surah Al-I'man, and some of the narrations. Or he recited from this Surah, or recited that Surah, and so on. So the, the Surah of the Qur'an and what the verse means, if a Surah was revealed or a part of a Surah was revealed, not just the entire Surah, not the entire Surah like Surah Al-Tawbah, for example, is a Surah. So not the entire surah necessarily, but even a portion of it, some verses of it. So every time something is revealed, فَمِنْهُمْ from among them. And among them in the entire surah the tawbah has been referred to as the hypocrites. So some of them would say, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ who Some of them would say, أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِيمَانًا Who among you, أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتْهُ Increased him this iman. That means it increased him iman or faith. Who among you that this surah or this portion of the surah had increased his iman, his faith? فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The people then are split into two categories. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And as for the believers, those who believed, فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا It increased their iman, increased their faith. وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ While they are rejoicing. It increased their iman while they are rejoicing. So, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Sometimes you see the verses in the Quran talks about الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And sometimes it talks about the mu'minun, the believers. Like the believers or those who believed. Of course they are both the same. 
But when you hear Alladina Amanu, what is being stressed here more is their action of faith. That means they acted upon faith. They were doing things to make them among the believers, praising them, giving the attention to what it means to be among the believers. So what do the believers do as a result of a surah is revealed or a portion of a surah is revealed? This is what is mentioned and then after that is going to talk about those who have disease of hypocrisy in the hearts. But we'll do that inshallah ta'ala after the break so stay with us inshallah. محمد رسول الله محمد رسول الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome back and with verse number 124 from Surah At-Tawbah about when the verses or when the Surah of the Quran is revealed whether it's the entire Surah or a portion of it some of the hypocrites, they would say and they would ask, who among you, the surah increased their iman, their faith? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as for the believers, فَزَادَتْهُمْ iman." The surah, when, it, when it's revealed, it increases their faith, increases their iman, and وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ And they are rejoicing. The meaning of this is that the believers, they increase in their belief. How is that? When a verse is revealed, when a surah is revealed, or verses are revealed, it has rulings in it. So that increases their iman because al iman qawlun wa amal. Al iman or faith is speech and actions. So when a person gets to know something more of matters of the deen, that increases one's actions and that therefore it increases one's iman. Also increases one's faith and one's iman when a person get to know more of an over surah is revealed, verses is revealed, talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that the previous verses didn't talk in such a way or more of the unseen is being revealed. And the more the people they believe in the unseen, the more that they increase in their faith. So the more details they have, uh, for example, if someone believes in the last day, one of the pillars of Al-Iman is to believe in the hereafter and the hour and so on. This is in general like this. But that's not the same as someone when he gets to know more about the hereafter. The many verses in the Quran that talks about the hereafter and about the Jannah, the Hawfaya and things like this. That's more in faith. person is increasing his faith by getting to know these details and believing in them. The same thing, for example, when the verses talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the more surahs are revealed, they get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes. So the more they learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes, the more that increases in the quantity of iman, the quantity of faith and the quality of it also. So the rulings, manners, that's why the religion of Islam or the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet was not given at once. It's given one verse after another, one hadith after the other. That's how the Sahaba radiallahu they built their faith and they increased their iman. They did not change overnight. It took a while for them to change. They were in state of jahiliyyah, state of ignorance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from that state of ignorance to be in the state of al-iman. And the state of jahiliyyah is when a person is a disbeliever. And then they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the verses were revealed one verse after the other. And they would take the verses, learn it. Learn how to recite it, learn the rulings of it. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them, they receive the Quran as rasail, as messages that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would learn it and apply it in their life and they go to the next set of verses and so on. So that increases their imans, their iman in matters of actions and matters of quality of the iman. And there's always a close relationship. When a person gets to know more and apply it with that sincerity, that increases the level of al-Iman in, in the quality of al-Iman and to increase the person closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the believers, and that's an amazing uh, way of ending the verse, وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ While they are rejoicing. That's an amazing one. Why? Because the believers, that's how it shows us how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used to receive the wahi, the revelation from Allah. They are rejoicing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing verses of the Qur'an to the Prophet ﷺ. They are rejoicing that they get to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted 
certain things with them, forbade certain things with them. This is something that is a source of their joy in this life. Why? Because they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just, and He's the most kind, and He's the most merciful. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids something for them, it's because of the mercy of Allah. When a person gets to know what's harmful, you see, for example, when people receive you know, news or articles from a trustworthy source, like a doctor, for example, telling them that what you're doing, specific food that they're eating or whatever there is, this is harmful for you. And he would show not just uh, an opinion, but rather he would show to them that this is why they are tired, for example, or they're suffering from whatever ailment. Imagine that this is the case. It's because of that one particular food that you're eating. And when they see that this is what's harming them, and if they leave all of this, they will be healthy and things like this, and they will feel better, how much happiness and how much joy they would, they would receive when the matter is as easy and simple as it is. Imagine that if this is the case. And even if they like the food that they were eating or whatever, they would have that sense of relief that finally that they can be healthy, that they can be good and so on. And what's even more important than all of this is matters of faith, al-iman, the most precious thing, the most valuable thing in our life, the hereafter, for a person to be saved from the hellfire, for a person to be among the people of Jannah, so the believers, the way they are towards the Qur'an is not that, uh, their attitude is not like someone would say, I don't want to know more about the rulings of the deen of Islam. Otherwise, you know, things that, are, that I'm doing, I would realize and discover that it's haram for me. So that means I'm going to stay away from it. It's going to make my life difficult. Some people, they say these things, whether it's uh, in speech or in the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And turning away from getting to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us it does not bring any goodness in our life. A person might, yes, he might think that he's more relaxed this way because there's no halal and haram in his life. He can just follow his desires. But then the outcome of things, how is it, how is it going to be? The outcome, the hereafter, how much regret that a person would have. You know, but rather, knowledge, the proper knowledge is always good. A person would say, but that means I have to stay away from this and stay away from that. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That your Lord, your creator of the heavens and earth, He's the one that he knows best what is best for you. You might think it's difficult, seek help from Allah. It doesn't do you any good if you stay away from that knowledge. That means you're doing yourself evil and more evil if you don't get to know this knowledge and not to act upon, upon it. But rather the believers, they want to know and they rejoice when they get to know the truth. And it doesn't mean that the matter becomes so easy for them all of a sudden. But rather they seek help then from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them to be steadfast upon the truth. And that's what the believers, they do. They, they rejoice because of the knowledge and then they work on their weaknesses by seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that knowledge a reality in their life. And then they will have the contentment and the goodness and the happiness. But it's an amazing word as mentioned in that verse 124 of how the believers, they rejoice when the verses are revealed. And that's how the iman, their, their joy is because of their faith. When their iman is increased, that brings more joy in their life. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, for example, he said in the authentic hadith, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنْ حَلَوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ Three things, whoever has it, he would find in them the sweetness of al-iman, the sweetness of faith. Therefore, al-iman or faith has sweetness to it. It's not like the sweetness of things that are physical in this life. It's a sweetness that whoever tasted it, he would never want anything other than that faith and that iman. And one of which is the Prophet والسلام, he said, Allah وسلم, that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, is more beloved to the person than anything else. Anything else, whether it's a wife or a child or a parent or life itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger وسلم, and that comes into the meaning also of the obedience is more beloved to the person than anything else. And that the second thing is that the person loves whoever he loves only for the sake of Allah. That a person loves someone only for the sake of Allah, not for anything materialistically in this life. People, they love each other, they have things, they have people in their life that they love and so on. But is it for the sake of Allah? Is it because that person is obedient to Allah or because of some worldly affairs and benefits and so on? So this is another thing to bring this sweetness of al-iman. When a person is conscious, 
only and focused on matters of the faith. And the third one, an yakrah an yauda fil kufr. That a person would hate to go back in the state of kufr and disbelief, kama yakrah an yukhdafa fil nar, the same way that he hates to be thrown into the fire. Hating to go back to disbelief. Disbelief is hellfire in this life. If we can see this life in such a perspective, that the fire in this life is disbelief, is ignorance. The things that would lead people to the hellfire in the hereafter, we should see it in this life as, as if it's real fire. You would run away. What would you do from a fire? Would you go into the fire? Would you throw yourself into a fire? Would you come close to the fire right, and uh, like it and things of that nature? Of course not. But when we look into, into this life, if, we, if you want to see the fire in this life, what would you see? You would see sinful acts. And that's what the Prophet والسلام, he said in a very powerful statement that حجبت النار بالشهوات وحجبت الجنة بالمكاره حجبت from hijab. The fire has been covered with what? With shahawat, with desires. So if you try to look for the hellfire, you look at it, what would you going to see? You see, you know, beautiful things, desirable things, you know, which is basically the sins that takes people away. But that means you go to it, that's the hijab, that's the cover of the fire. It's covered. The believers, they see beyond that cover because the Prophet ﷺ informed them. If someone that you trust and he told you there is a curtain or there's a door and behind that door, right, something or someone that is going to kill you, right? Uh, what would you do or how would you treat that, si that thing? Would you go and then just go to that curtain and go past it and, and go to the other side and get killed if you trust that person? Of course, nobody sane would do such a thing. But rather, you would stay away from it. Even though you know, that door or that wall can look very pleasant. This is the reality of this life. People are calling others to go to the hellfire. But the way they're calling them, using their desires, using their desire, men desiring women, women desiring men, desire of wealth, to attain it, whether it's halal, haram, it doesn't matter, living a life of forgetfulness and sins, and they have fun and so on, and then basically if whoever breaks that hijab and that curtain, he will enter the hellfire. On the other hand, if you want to see the jannah in the hereafter, it's covered, but covered by what? By makareh, dislike things, and this is something that we see in Surah at tawbah Makareh dislike things. That means you have to go through the dislikes. You have to wake up for Salat al Fajr to pray and give charity and be kind to others when you don't feel like being kind to them. Uh, raising the children, being caring for others. Uh, stay away from haram. Stay away from relationships outside the fold of Al Islam. Understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. We're living at times when people they make their religion is their desires. If they desire something, that means it has to be right. No, there is right and wrong. And it's okay if something, you know, also another people, some people they think that if something that we desire, why is it haram? Why is it forbidden for us? This is some people they think this way. They think that if something that we desire, then it should be permissible. And this is, you know, something that is not based on proper intellect, right? It, there is nothing wrong with having something that we desire and it's haram for us. It's forbidden for us. So we are ordered to stay away from it. Because not everything that we desire is good at the end. You know, and sometimes, again, as we mentioned this many examples before, as the Prophet ﷺ said to the men that came to him and he, gave, he asked for permission for zina, he said, you like it for your mother, you like it for your aunt, you like it for your sister, and so on. And then when he said, no, 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 and then the Prophet ﷺ said every time, nobody likes that for his mother and for his sister and so on. Then he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for him. Uh, so the point here is, not anything that a person, a person desire to kill people, would he then be allowed to do that because it's a, it's a desirable thing? A person would say, well, if, it's, if it hurts others, if it's come something that causes harm to others, then it's not permissible. Well, uh, this is true. And also, on the other hand, things that is not related to others, but still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high forbidden, and anything that is forbidden, uh, even though it might be desirable, but if a person knows the reality of it, that it's fire, he would stay away from it. But the concept or to make it as a principle that anything that we desire then a person can go after it? No, there are many things that we desire even for people, those who are indulged into materialistic things in this life they would do things that they don't like because they desire something they might be short-sighted 
because their desire is in the weekend, for example. So they endure patient throughout the entire week to work and to work hard so that they fulfill their desire in the weekend, for example, at the end of the day. And the same concept for the believers when they are following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point here is the believers, they rejoice. But then what happened to the hypocrites and those who they have diseases in the hearts when the surahs of the Qur'an uh, are revealed? This is what's in the next verse. We'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala after the break. So stay with us inshallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah Muhammadur Rasulullah Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam Rasulullah Welcome back and with verse 125 from Surah At-Tawbah talking about when the verses of the Quran are revealed and some of the people, some of the hypocrites, they ask, who among you, it increased your iman? As for the believers, it increased their iman and they're rejoicing. And we talked about that and how we should be in that state of getting to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and to bring that joy in our hearts that we want to follow the orders of Allah. And if we, if we feel weak and we are weak, we, sh we need to seek help from Allah so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the real joy when we're obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, as for those who have diseases in their hearts, the disease of hypocrisy, what happens to them when the verses and the surahs of the Qur'an are revealed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, 125, But as for those in whose hearts is disease, it has only increased them in evil, in addition to their evil and they will have died while they are disbelievers. It's amazing how the same book, the Qur'an, can cause these two opposite effects in the hearts of the people. And it shows the importance of the heart and the importance of the person and how the person can receive the same thing. Two people, they receive the same thing. One would have a great effect to it, to himself, and one has the opposite effect. How the Qur'an, the book of mercy, no doubt. But how people, when they oppose the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have a disease in their hearts, the Qur'an becomes, increases, it increases their evil because they disbelieve in it. As for those who have in their hearts, disease. Marad is a disease. What is the disease? The disease is mentioned open, but of course with the context of the verses. The disease of hypocrisy, but also any disease. There are two types of diseases that are mentioned in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The disease of uh, shabuhat, the doubtful disease, like the hypocrites, they have doubts, disbelief and things like this. And that to cure that disease from the heart is by knowledge and by seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other type of diseases, and it's diseases because it's not just one particular one, is the marad of a shahawat or the desirable actions, the sinful uh, desirable actions. This is also causes a disease in the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran. So those who have disease in the hearts, you know, the cure to the second one is by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having the fear of Allah and working on ourselves to eliminate this evil and to constantly repent to Allah. So for those who have diseases in the hearts, the verses of the Quran, the surahs of the Quran when it's revealed, it's mainly the hypocrisy فَزَادَتْهُمْ رِجِسًا إِلَى رِجِسِهِمْ فَزَادَتْهُمْ It increased them رِجِسًا The rich is evil or impurity. إِلَى رِجِسِهِمْ To what's already there in them. To the already impurities and evil in their hearts. وَمَاتُ وَمْ كَافِرُونَ And they will die as disbelievers. So the verses, why it's causing this effect into the hearts? Because they reject the verses. They're not receiving these verses of the Qur'an with submission with love, that they get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. You know, they receive it as you know, another burden for them, as if it's another burden for them. They'll be more exposed now, because now more rulings for them to apply, and if they don't do it, then the believers will see that they are evil people and so on. So they have disease in their hearts. So the beautiful verses of the Qur'an increases their evil in the hearts because of how they deal with these verses. They reject it, they disbelieve in it, they don't submit themselves to it. And as a result of that, these hypocrites, they die as disbelievers if they do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So again, the Quran either takes the person to Jannah or will either be to the hellfire. Because the evidence are established. The clear truth is mentioned. So whoever takes it and apply it and humble themselves to it, it would lead them to Jannah and to the pleasure of Allah. And whoever takes the truth and arrogantly turn away from it, then he should not blame anyone but his own self. He's leading his own self to its own destruction. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in verse number 126, how that they will be tested. The hypocrites will be tested. And they were tested at the time of the Prophet والسلام, uh, because of their diseases in the hearts. 126, Do they not see that they are tried every year once or twice, but then they do not repent, nor do they remember? Don't they see, meaning these hypocrites, those who the Quran, the verses of the Quran increases their filth in their hearts because they reject it, they disbelieve in it, they don't submit themselves to it, they don't go with the Prophet ﷺ, sacrificing their wealth and their life for the sake of Allah. Don't they see that they are tried, yuftanun, al-fitna in the Quran, one of the meanings of it is the trial, that they're being tried. In some of the times it means the punishment. So they are being tried, في كل عام مرة أو مرتين. One time, two times, twice. They are being tried, tried by verses in the Quran, tried by things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala decree upon them, to see whether they will be steadfast on the Deen of Allah, repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, or they would increase their filth. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows what's in their hearts, but to establish the truth and the evidence against them. ثم لا يتوبون. After they are being tried, they don't repent to Allah. They don't repent, they don't return to Allah. Unlike the believers, whenever they try it, even if they slip, they immediately return to Allah with repentance. But the hypocrites, they don't repent to Allah. And also a reminder for those who continue to be in the state of disobeying Allah or opposing the orders of Allah. They rejoice when the orders of Allah are undermined and they do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lahum and they don't take remembrance of it. They don't take lessons from these trials that they face. And everything in our life is basically a trial to our faith. And when people become so ignorant about these matters, they become more and more in state of forgetfulness. Diseases, earthquakes, plagues, all kinds of things. You know, things we have to relate it all to the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Even on a personal level, when we are healthy, sick, when we have money, when we lose money, relationships, everything is there for a reason. Whether a person is suffering or having a moment of joy, all of that is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether the person will repent to Allah or whether not to repent to Allah. Whether a person, these types of trials with matters of ease or matters of difficulties, either it takes the person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people, when at times of ease, they're close to Allah. And they're doing acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And when they're tested with something difficult in their life, they turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some other people, the opposite. They are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they're poor. They keep on making dua to Allah, things like this. They're not exposed to many trials and fitan. And then once matters becomes easy for them and they get a good job and they uh, are in a relationship, whatever there is, they start turning away from the orders of Allah. And sometimes, and these are the best people, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, that whether they are poor or rich, whether they get a good job or a bad job, whatever there is, they're constantly in that path of fearing Allah, being obedient to Allah. The worldly gain does not change them, does not change their hearts, does not change their obedience to Allah. They don't turn away from reading the Quran because now they're busy with the with the materialistic things, a person used to have more time and now he doesn't have time. Why is that? Because of the materialistic benefits of this life? Is it for what reason? Is it to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior or for the sake of enjoyment of this life? It's the concept again that we need to purify our hearts from to go beyond and above these materialistic attachment that people they have. We need, yes, no harm for a person to have a good job and to have wealth and to have health and all of these things, but for what reason? If it's not for the sake of Allah, then it will be a source of regret. 
And part of knowing that is by, by staying away from haram, by staying away from what's forbidden, and by doing what is halal, what's permissible, and that these matters does not take us away from being obedient to Allah, from our salah, from our goodness to people, from our charities, from uh, enjoying good and forbidding evil, from seeking knowledge, and so on and so forth. So as we see in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is purifying the hearts of the believers. And uh, the last of the verses in the surah of Surah At-Tawbah that talks about the hypocrites. And even as the ulama, they said, since the Prophet وسلم, the battle of Tabuk was the last of the battles that he fought during his life, والسلام, the last verse that we just heard was to the believers because this is what's going to happen after the Prophet وسلم, by the companions of Allah anhum. Allah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them when they have the means to give victory to the deen of Allah, to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior, and for the people of the truth to be comfortable and to be strong that you are upon the truth and your enemies are upon falsehood. So be proud of who you are and be steadfast on the deen of Allah because that's the truth. If the situation is different in the times that you live in and people are weak and oppressed and so on, it doesn't make a difference. The outcome is coming. The end is coming. And the end is definitely is what is best for the believers. And whether the believers, they would see it or not in their lifetime, it doesn't make a difference for them. Why? Because they are obedient to Allah. And what matters for them is the hereafter. This is what matters for them. And matters of this life, it will happen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them. And also the importance of having the proper belief in one's faith. That al-iman that those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised in the Qur'an, the believers. But what type of belief? Is it the belief of those who they innovate in the deen of Islam? The belief of those who curse the Sahaba radiallahu anhum? The belief of those who turn away from the deen of Allah and they manipulate the verses and to follow their desires and they don't follow the truth? No, the belief of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised in the Qur'an, the companions radiallahu anhum. They believe that, they believe that Iman increases and decreases. Increases with the good deeds, decreases with the bad deeds. Some people, they think faith is faith. It's just a belief in the heart and that's it. Your actions has nothing to do with your faith. You can be perfect believer, have the perfect love of Allah and the perfect love of the Prophet Wasallam, but you can live your life committing sins and committing uh, zina and, and drinking and partying and so on and your faith is perfect. This is all false. Some people, they think this way. This is how we get to know what the proper meaning of faith is. If a person is faithful, yes, he's upon the truth, but he commits major sins, he's still a Muslim, but it, it decreases one's faith. The faith increases with the good deeds, decreases with the bad deeds. And therefore, a person has to understand Al-Iman in the proper way. And the believers, the good deeds increases their Iman, and the verses of the Qur'an, the surahs of the Qur'an, increases the Iman. So when we look into our life, when we're not learning the surahs of the Qur'an, how can we increase our Iman? So this is a call for all of us to give more attention to the book of Allah, to the Qur'an. If you don't know how to read the Qur'an, <coughs> learn how to read the Qur'an. Learn how to understand the Qur'an, to learn the meanings of the verses, to apply it in our life, to uh, feel that our life is wasted if we do not get to, to learn the book of Allah. Life might be short, we take the means, the intentions goes beyond one's actions. And if a person is patient with learning the book of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But the intention here is to increase our iman, to increase our faith. That's why those who have doubts or those who are deviated, you would find them people that are not attached to the Qur'an. Many people, they complain about the youth, for example. They're turning away from the deen because they're away from the Qur'an and rather they're attached to their gadgets and machines and social media and so on. We need to refer back to the Qur'an and increase our Iman when we read the Qur'an and we would see amazing things in our life. And the real rejoice, the real joy in this life is when a person is holding fast to the Book of Allah, reading the Qur'an on a daily basis, trying to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the people of knowledge, using the Qur'an to purify the diseases in our hearts, the diseases of doubts, the diseases of uh, desirable sinful acts and so on and to understand that this is the means of success and to hold fast to the book of Allah to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people of the Quran and to 
make us among those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make us among those who for perfect and increase their iman. So till next time and next time inshallah ta'ala we'll talk about the end of Surah At-Tawbah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to enter the Jannah of Allah. So till next time I leave you with the protection of Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka wa muhammadin wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا فأولئك أتوب عليهم وأنا التواب الرحيم فادعوا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون يا زكريا 